I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. I hope my voice coming good and clear. Actually, I apologize for the delay, uh, <clears throat> which is usual anyway, but I was drinking some water and suddenly the water went in the wrong direction. So you might notice my voice is not comfortable. Man, that was horrible. <clears throat> so with Allah, if you put him in your throat, because the Muslim, they try to push Allah in your throat, always go in the wrong direction. A question always we ask the Muhammadan and nobody can answer. If you search in Google, if you search in YouTube, in search, search whatever you want, you will see that not a single Muslim really can tell you who is Allah. Oh, what they say to you is God. Okay, I know that he's your God. That's not the question. Who is Allah? Uh, he is the creator. But uh, I'm not asking you what he do. And the Quran says he is the best of the creator or the creators. So that doesn't say anything anyway, because if he is the best of the creators, that means he is just one of many creators. So who is Allah? So I searched for a video, uh, and I found Mufti Mink. And I think Mufti Mink, he can uh, help us to tell us who is Allah. Shall we listen? Let us go to Mufti Mink. Not this guy. This guy. Who is Mufti Mink? Mufti Mink, he have this video. I forward the first three, four minutes because he is saying nothing but praising Allah, which we do not know, which Muslims do not know. So now <clears throat> Mufti Mink, he is going to give you something really priceless about how to find out who is Allah. Let us listen to what Mufti Mink want to say. Allah says, we will continue showing them signs in the horizons, meaning in the creation of Allah, as well as within themselves, until it is proven beyond doubt to them that it is the truth. <laughs> so Allah, he said that before he created mankind, he will keep showing them sign until he is proven himself without any doubt. So why people still have doubt? And why Allah did not give Muhammad any sign? You know, when you see the Muslim talking about sign, we shall give them signs. But this is a contradiction for everything the Quran is saying. And the Quran says, if this is a book made by other than Allah, <coughs> you will find in it a lot of contradiction. So if we go right now, we see that the Arab and the people of Muhammad and the Jews, they keep saying, how come he don't give us a sign? But Mufti Mink, he just quote for us that Allah will keep, give us signs, and this is in the time of Muhammad, until there's no doubt. The signs will not continue because Muhammad is the one who provided with the signs, supposedly. If you ask the Muslims, what is the word sign in the Quran? They say sign is an ayah. Chapter 2, verse 106, it says, any ayah we abrogate. You ask the Muslim, what does that mean? They say, oh, in this case, it means verse. 
So the same word, which is verse, the same word is a is a is a sign for the Muslims. Do you see it? This is the Muslim translation. In Arabic, it says ayah. When Mufti Mink was, was quoting for us, he says ayah. So was Allah speaking about giving ayah to prove that he is God? That would be silly. Or he, Allah is talking about giving signs. Well, Mufti Mink himself, he translated as sign. So we will go with his translation. <clears throat> In chapter 2, verse 118, people asking, how come this Allah don't talk to us? Or he send us ayah. Here the word ayah translated as sign. Those who have no knowledge say, why does not Allah speak to us or come to us with sign? sign? But you just heard Mufti Mink saying, that Allah will keep giving signs. The Quran saying that the stupid ones asking for signs. The one who have no knowledge. The one who don't want to believe. The one who they are not Muslims. <laughs> and then Allah, instead of giving them a sign, he say, you know what? There is people before you, they ask for the same thing. They said, how come Allah did not give us a sign? So instead of he doing a sign, which he keep promising, as we heard Mufti Mink, he is saying, well, people before you, they ask for a sign, and uh, they are the same as you, you know, okay? But we know that, as an example, if we say, who is the one before Muhammad? The Muslim, they say that the first prophet was before Muhammad was Isa which supposedly is Jesus. So how come Allah, in the case of Jesus, he did not say the same to the people of Isa, saying to them, well, you know what? I'm not going to give you a sign because people before you ask for the same thing. Are you with me? So Mufti may confirm that Allah will give us signs after signs until we have no doubt. And he said that 1400 years ago. After 1400 years, people are leaving Islam. And they have more doubt than ever before. People are asking what website I'm using. This is called Quran Wow. QuranWow.com. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to join us? Any Muhammadan would like to join us and tell us who is Allah? My previous and previous and previous, 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 previous experience that none of the Muslim dare to speak about this topic because nobody of them, none of them knows who is Allah. If you watch the whole video of Mufti Mink, you will see he don't tell you who is Allah. Okay, the, the title of the video is, Who is Allah? The answer in the video, Allah will give you signs. And where is the signs? We cannot find them. Is it the sun set in muddy, boiling water? Is it the sign that Allah is a stupid in biology? He think that the baby is made by a semen coming from the ribs of the women and the semen coming from the backbone of the man? <clears throat> is it the sign that Allah did not remember which one he created first, the mountains or the stars? Which sign? And according to the uh, books of explanation of the Quran, he want to tell us who is Allah according to the books of explanation of the Quran. Allah cannot tell us who is Allah. <clears throat> Do you notice the stupidity? He just said Allah will give you signs. Then according to the explanation of the Quran. So 
according to Muhammad ibn No, according to the explanation of the Quran. So the Quran could not explain itself. Allah could not explain itself. And now there is people who come who try to explain Allah for us. Let us hear what he will say. The term it here is referring to the Quran itself, the revelation. The revelation is the truth. It has come to you with a lot and Allah will prove it as time passes that each and everything that he taught you is actually the truth. Absolutely. That's why we are laughing at it. Same time, remember the topic who is Allah. Now we are talking about revelation. Why you don't change the topic and say is what is revelation? Sometimes you might have science proving something contradictory for a while. And after a decade or, or more or a century or more or less, science will just apologize because it has a new finding. And that new finding will then be in conformance to what was revealed. So Allah says, we're going to show this to you as time passes. Mm -hmm. That's not my topic today, but really going back to who made me. So number one is I have to admit someone made me. Number two is really? he cannot be like me. No way. It's not like me because time has passed. Millions and billions have been on earth and they have advanced. And with their advancement, every year we are more and more, you know, well acquainted with our bodies, our limbs and so on, more and more findings. So we are progressing, we're advancing. With that advancement, nobody has created a human being, subhanAllah, exactly as we are. And there is anybody can prove to me that Allah created a human being? I mean, the Muhammadan, you ask them, what is the proof that Allah is your God? They say to you the Quran. We say to them, okay, what is the proof that the Quran is from Allah? They say to you the Quran. What is the proof that Muhammad received Quran from Allah? The Quran. If there is any witnesses, no. Did Muhammad even spoke to Allah? No. Did Muhammad even heard the fart of Allah? No. So what is your proof of everything you are saying? You see, we are a Christian. We believe in the creator. We are not atheist. So all this talk is rubbish. Who is Allah? Until now, they cannot tell us. Okay, I know somebody created me. What does this have to do with Allah? Can you prove to us? I mean, let us say for the sake of argument, Allah is the one who created you. Still, they do not tell me who is Allah. <laughs> we have uh, Mr. Walid. He tried to uh, join us last time I was live. And I think he could not make it, but now he can. Let us see. I'm calling him. <laughs> Let us hope he will answer. Okay, taking some time to answer. I'm not sure why. Okay, let's try again. We will give it a try. Hello? I'm fine, Mr. Warid. How are you? I'm doing all right, man. Um, if you afford me the, the time, I would like to say three things. Yeah, do you know the, the name of our, to our topic today? Oh, yeah, I do. I, I saw the topic. Do you like to share with us, tell us who is Allah? And maybe, maybe later after you finish, you can tell us whatever you want to say. Well, um, well the, see, the thing is, 
I used to be a Muslim and I converted to Christianity. Oh, you are a Muslim. Okay, because I see your name sound like a Muslim. All right. Yeah, yeah. Well, what happened is when um, back in 1997, when I converted to Islam, um, I converted through a group. I, I'm not sure if you're aware of them. They, I think they're from Malaysia. Uh, it's a special branch of um, Islam. It's called Naqshbandi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you're. Yeah, I know. I know Naqshbandi. So, yeah. Yeah, so when I converted, um, hmm. I mean, I, I can prove it to you, you know, when I used to be a Muslim, you know, like La ilaha illallah, Muhammadul Rasulallah, mm -hmm. um, or Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. No problem. So, so again, I want to just say three things. I don't want to take too much of your time because um, I do respect your ministry and what you're doing is it's very, very good. Um, so when I was a Muslim, um, the, the, the main thing that I, I noticed with Islam um, is the, the, it, it's almost like they keep you in this bubble and all these people, you know, they don't want to really tell you all the things that you're sharing. Um, and unfortunately what Islam and, and the Quran and the, and this fake prophet Muhammad, uh, what a lot of people don't realize, especially in the Muslim world is that the Quran has no direct connection there's no consistency with the previous revelations from the Old Testament or, you know, what they call Nevi'im or, or in other words, the Tanakh. And, and then the Tanakh reveals that we were expecting a Messiah who will be the son of David, who will die and he himself will be God or God becoming, becoming flesh. So when 600 years later after Christianity comes, there, this weird religion comes into the scene. And the unfortunate thing is that this religion had no connection to the previous revelations. What the religion did, however, is use texts that um, were considered Gnostic texts by a her heretical group, um, uh, Christian group. Um, and we can see evidence of that in the Quran with the, you know, with Jesus creating the birds. That's from the Gospel of Thomas. Then you can also see other, um, you know, with the fact that Jesus was not killed and that he's not the son of God. That's also from a late document that we know, we know as a fact, is a forgery, um, which was invented in the year 400. So it seems like Mohammed, who didn't have no scholarly um, um, knowledge, grabbed all these texts. He somehow thought that this was part of the Christian world and he inserted it in the Quran. And, and as a result of that, now there's uh, uh, millions of people who are affected by this uh, false knowledge. Now, uh, you know, and thank, and thank to God, you know, I was able to become free from that. And I accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. The second thing that I wanted to say to you, um, and it's real quick, I, I want to be very brief. Um, I saw a video from you the other day that um, somebody asked you concerning Matthew 27, where um, it mentions that Jesus... Um, I believe it talks about the potter um, and concerning the, um, the, the betrayal of Judas and the, and the 30 pieces of silver. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I mean, I felt that maybe people who were listening didn't, didn't get it clearly. Um, but what we do know, um, as a matter of fact, is that the, the old scrolls from the Old Testament, normally they used to be put together. But when they were put together, they will normally have the major prophet in front and then the minor prophet. So when Matthew is quoting out of, um, I believe is, um, he quoted from Jeremiah, but it was actually from Zechariah. Um, it's because the scrolls back in the days, because there was no chapters, it was really hard to find these scrolls. So you always refer to the main, the main prophet in the beginning of the scroll, which sometimes contain two books. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to say, and so that we can close this up and you can uh, keep going what you're doing, it's more of a suggestion. Um, I do appreciate everything you're doing and that a lot of people are able to obtain this knowledge um, that you're bringing forth. And, and it's no better than a person who's an Arab and who understands the religion. Um, but as we already know, it, it's what you're doing is very dangerous. It's, there's no doubt um, that what you're doing is very dangerous. 
Um, so my suggestion, which is the last thing I'm going to say, is make sure that as you are being reached by people, um, that you're behind a, a uh, VPN. Um, it's very important for your own safety. All right. Okay, my friend. Anything else you want to say? Um, no, that, that, that will be all. Um, yeah. yeah they, but they, uh, they, 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 can you tell me, oh, you know, all those things really you mentioned to me, like especially the last one is the last one I care for. I, I fear nobody. And my safety, uh, no Muslim will dare to get close to me, trust me. Uh, okay. But anyway, uh, about people understanding what? how Matthew and how he, Matthew, he write. Uh, first of all, uh, what we care for is what he said. Uh, how he caught uh, and which one first, it doesn't matter. For us, we read the words, and the words as it is, it is. And uh, when a Muslim, he try uh, to question, you know, there's two kinds of people. There's people who are asking questions, and there's people they question, to question. So uh, the Bible will come people to question how uh, things are meant. But I think the Bible is so clear. Uh, uh, you know, and the, the story in Matthew, present to us a lot of things actually and it's connected to you know uh, uh, to mark uh, and luke and john all those connected together however it's connected to tell us that you can be a person who is very elect and very chosen yet you can betray the lord we are different from muslims muslim believe in destiny which make islam very stupid and very funny uh, destiny in christianity is even uh, if even if god he decide to choose you uh, as an example he chose God he chosen uh, Adam to be created that is a choice God he chosen Adam to be in heaven that is a choice but God told Adam not to eat and disobey from the tree that was the choice of Adam so all of Christianity and our faith is based on choices so even when the Lord he chose you you choose whatever you like uh, I have one question about how they were able to convert you. You said to me long time ago, those Naqshbandi, which is not a bunch of Sufi, they sing and dance and, you know, weirdo, which is not even considered yeah. as Muslims. Yeah, what happened What happened was um, I was living in Brighton, Boston, and, um, and I was down in um, Commonwealth Avenue, 1350 Commonwealth Avenue, which is in front of the train. Um, uh, so during that time, you know, I met this 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 kid. Um, his name is uh, Mohammed Hafist. Um, he's he's from Malaysia, you know. And um, so I started talking to him. And back then, I didn't know nothing about nothing. Like literally, religion was not part of my life. And he began to talk to me about Mohammed, but I I never heard of this uh, religion or or anything. I was like 18 years old or something like that. Um, so then little by little they started talking to me more and more and then um um they finally you know got to me and they um but they what the what the major converted. thing what the major thing was able to make you think of islam well see the thing the thing is that the most arguments that they kept postulating is that how can how can christianity have three gods i was not a christian but you know i knew christianity yeah. And 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 it, it's not logical, and Islam is is logical. It's a clean religion, and all of this stuff. So so it, it was very appealing, because all of us humans we we have a natural desire to look for God, but when I got sucked in there into that world, um, they gave me a new name. My my real name is William, mm -hmm. but um, that that that's why they gave me um, his name is She, she Abdul Karim. Um, he's from Turkey and he, when he converted me, um, he made me, um, do the, you know, la ilaha illallah Muhammad, Muhammadul Rasulallah. Mm -hmm. And then when I converted, they gave me a new name and they said Walid Al Karim. Mm -hmm. Um, but as time progressed, um, in, in, in the same buildings around there, because I used to live around there, there was a, a, a white woman who was arguing really, really strangely with another guy. And and one of the things that I remember that she said, which kind of like made me question, but I never searched. She said, oh, it's such a stupid thing that um, um, Allah will make um, uh, uh, Suleiman go up in heaven and then he's going to summon the, the <laughs> you know, the, the, the ant. And I said, well, that sounds really stupid. 
is that in the Quran? And after that, you know, I didn't think about it much. Um, so years went by. But then something happened one day when I'm getting ready to go to work. Uh, I decided to turn the TV. And for some reason, there was a Jesus movie. And it and when I turned it on, it was on the on on the section where Jesus is on the cross. Like the movie was almost over. But, it, you know, Jesus is already in the cross. And he's saying, uh, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. When I heard those words, something something strange happened to me. I went to school. I couldn't stop thinking about it. And and then a um, few few days later, you know, I met this Guatemalan guy. He started preaching to me about, uh, you know, Jesus and all of that. And I was like fiercely like debating him. No, how can Jesus be God and this and that? The Quran says that Jesus never died and, and that God took him away and all of this. But he kept more patiently and persistently. And then um, I accepted Jesus after that. Um, and I've been a Christian ever, ever since, All right. um, over 20, 20 years ago, Happy um, for you, my friend. but, I, but, but I'm telling you, and this is the last thing I want to say, because I don't want to take your time is, um, and I'm saying this because of my own experience, a lot of Muslims do not read. They don't, a lot of Muslims don't dig deep into the Hadith or the Quran and everything is more like what they, what the ship says or whatever. And, it's, and they never have this understanding primarily that the Quran is an amalgamation. An amalgamation means it's, it's a unification of a lot of things thrown in there, including including the Gnostic text. And they don't know that. Um, and then to answer your question, Allah, basically, once I did, did the search, um, Allah is basically the worship of the moon god. And 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 then little by little, I just deconverted and converted to Christianity, and and I'm happy that I'm a I'm a Christian. Well, so God bless that's you, all my I want to say. Um, thank you very much. Uh, God bless you, man, and um and and thank you for for everything you're doing because you are through you, the Lord Jesus Christ is setting free a lot of people. I mean, thank you, man. Thank you. God bless. Take care. All right. Yeah, you know, we cannot. We there's no Muslim can dig inside the Quran because you cannot dig in something so shallow. The Quran is the most shallow, stupid book ever. We, we will dig in what? You know, sometimes like uh, language speaking, we say uh, deep dive. But how you can deep dive in something very shallow? I mean, what kind of God he promised me? I will have endless penis. I mean, that's, I, will, I will dig where? <laughs> you do not need to dig for it. It's coming out. So this is not even religion. This is just a stupid collection of many religion. Uh, Muhammad, he was trying to make himself someone. Uh, you know, before he moved to the uh, and live with the Jews, he knew nothing about Judaism. He did not even know any name of the first of the Jews. He did not know even any prophet of the Jews. He knew nothing about Judaism. When he moved and lived between the Jews, and actually we can prove that in two minutes in, from, from uh, their books. Uh, and Muhammad even, uh, uh, the, the story when he heard about the fasting of Ashura, he met some Jews, he said to them, what is this? Well, you are fasting. They said, this is the, the day we, uh, Moses, he passed over the sea. He said, okay, well, you know what? As long as this is for Moses, this is, uh, uh, we are more close to Moses than you. He, he hijacked the fasting. He ordered a Muslim to fast it. So Muhammad did not even have a fasting in his religion. Fasting is something he stole. He noticed the Christian, the Jews, others, they fast. So Muhammad wanted to have a fast too. Otherwise, how he can be a religious person and how he can have a religion. Uh, he makes the old religion, which he have before he uh, met with the Christians, which is the paganism of uh, Islam in the Kaaba. And you will notice that Muhammad, he neglected the Kaaba for a long time. But when the Christian and the Jews, they neglected him and they did not accept him, he go back to pray to the Kaaba. And then you ask yourself, I mean, why you pray to the Kaaba? now but you were praying toward jerusalem all of that is just a hypocr hypocrisy action so to make the jews and the christians accept him he prayed to the toward jerusalem for a long time and then when the christians and the jews did not accept him as a prophet he gave up and this is why we see in chapter 9 verse number 29 which came at the last chapter muhammad he said in the quran he said go and kill the christian and the jews 
because now he knew that those people, they knew him very well. He is just a fraud. Now we go back to our topic. If there is any Muhammadan would like to join us, please feel free. Who is Allah? And I say, none of you Muslims knows. And I know what will happen. The time will go and not a single Muslim would dare to call us because this is a topic no Muslim can answer. No Muslim. As you see, this uh, Mufti Mink in the video, he will give you a longer speech, but he will not tell you who is Allah. Who is Allah? لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم. Now he will sing the Quran for you. Indeed, we have created man in أحسن, meaning the best. You see here, uh, when you quote uh, something uh, from your book, and supposedly you are trying to prove to me that Allah is God, but the verse saying that the best of the creatures or the creation is the human being. Let us go to the verse he is quoting for us. Chapter 95, verse number 4. But you will notice that Mufti Mink, he did not read for us the beginning of the chapter. If we can quote the chapter. If Allah created everything, and He is the creator of everything, what kind of God He swear by the fig and the olive? Or by a mount? And He swear even by the city of Mecca. I mean, what is this? You see, when you swear, you swear by something the most valuable thing for you. Something is more treasure than you yourself. If somebody swear, he swear by God. The Muslim, when they swear, they swear by Allah or by Muhammad. But Allah, the Creator, he swear by the fig and the olive. And he swear by the city, which city we do not know. But we assume it is Mecca. And then now, Mufti Mink, he jumped to say to us, we created the man as the best stature, mold. What does that mean? Remember, he is trying to utter us, who is Allah? And then he is saying to us, and we reduced him to the lowest of the low. If we ask Mufti Mink, explain to us how in the world this has happened. Because the first one who was created, it was Adam, and the first one was reduced, is Adam. But the Muslim, they say, Adam is a prophet, and the prophet are the best of mankind. Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Who is the first one reduced to the lowest of the law? Adam, Adam was in heaven. Adam and Eve, they were kicked out of heaven. Who is the first one who was created? Allah speaking of supposedly. Adam. And those names, by the way, in the story, story from the Bible. This is a story, story from the Bible. And the proof of that, no Muslim knows even what Adam means. What Adam means, they do not know. What Noah means, they do not know. All those names have nothing to do with, with, the, with the Arabic language. Muhammad is a thief. He's a prophet, he do not know what Moses mean, what Abraham mean, what Adam mean, what, what Noah mean, what, what, what Eve mean, they don't know. So, you ask any Muslim, is Adam a prophet? They will say yes. Did Allah reduce him to the lowest of the low? They will say no. But if, if you don't mind to think with me, Allah created only supposedly one man and one woman. The rest are not a creation. They are reproduction. Do we agree? We can say metaphorically, I'm a created by God. But I am a reproduction of Adam and Eve. If you believe in the story of Adam and Eve. So God created only two humans. He did not even create three, not even four, not even five. Only two. 
The rest is reproduction. Even the Quran confirmed that, where Allah He says in the Quran, chapter 25, wa And this is the same verse allow Muslim man to have sex with his daughter if she is a daughter out of marriage. Chapter 25, verse 54 says, It is he who created the human, being from water, then invested him with ties of a blood and marriage. So as you see, the human being created just from water, that the first human being is Adam, and then Adam, he have a wife, and then everything is just to follow. There's only one man, one, 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 one woman is created. So the same verse this man he is quoting for us is the same verse proving to us Islam to be stupid and doesn't make sense. And, you know, uh, uh, like as long as I am in chapter 25, verse number 36, uh, uh, sorry, 54, you will see verse number 56, it says, we not send you expect to be a barrier of good news and as a warner. So why Muhammad is killing people as he is just a warner? In this stage, Muhammad, he don't have an army and he don't claim to be aggressive. So he was being hypocrite. I'm just a warner. You know, I don't want anything from you. Later, he raped them. He took their women. He took their money. But he's just a warner. This is not a warner do. A warner just he warn. That what a warner do. The action, even the verse says, the action is for Allah. The verse before it says the action is only for Allah. So as you see, every statement in this book is a stupid statement. Let us try to go back to Mufti Mink. Maybe we can find the solutions. He want to say something useful. Okay, so Allah, he claimed, the Quran claimed that Allah created the human in the, as a best of creatures. But there is any proof that Allah, he created that. And what does have to do with who's Allah? Nothing. Of taqweem, your postures. You know, the way you stand, the way you sit, the way you hold, the way you see, the exact positioning of all your limbs and all. That have nothing to do with you are the, you are the best of a creation. That is a stupid of you. As an example, a little bird can see better than you. It's called eagle. A little dog can smell 400, 600 times better than you. It's called dog. So you are being stupid now. In fact, human being... He have the less ability compared to animals to survive. There's only, you see, he did not mention the brain. The most important thing a human being he have is the brain. Otherwise, in the rest, who care how you stand up, how you walk? Who, who care? I am not in the best way I am because I stand up like this or I walk like that, human being, he is superior because of the brain. If the monkeys were smarter than us, they would be superior, and we would be in the zoo. As simple as that. So the Mohammedan, as usual, they shuffle the brain away, and they describe you as a human being, how you look like. But isn't it the angels, they look better than us? Isn't it Allah, he look better than us? The Muslim is sure. So what look have to do with being the best? Very silly, very stupid. Tokens, Allah says the best. The best. the best from what? From all other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, he just said, from the best of all other creatures of Allah. So we are better than the angels. But when Muhammad, he saw the angel in the sky, Muhammad, he bowed down to him. 
Let us go to the hadith. And actually, there's a video of him, the same person, Mufti Mink, saying that. Let us find the hadith. Remember, we are the best in the creation. And you ask the Muslims, who is the best creation? They will say Muhammad. So why Muhammad is bowing down to the angel? Let us see. <laughs> if, if Muhammad is the best, it should be the angel bowing down to Muhammad, right? And Muhammad is the best. Give me a minute, I'm trying to find the hadith. Yeah, and said now I could not find it, but I will go first. Let us go to the Quran. How the Quran speak about Jibreel? Who the Muslim they claim it is Jibreel. Nowhere, by the way, it says he is Jibreel. But the Muslim they say he is Jibreel. Remember, the Quran says if this is book made by other than Allah, you will find in it a lot of contradiction. How Allah describe the Quran, this is not hadith, describe Jibreel. As you see in front of you, if this is Jibreel. This is Jibreel supposedly. This is Jibreel supposedly. This is Jibreel, Jibreel supposedly. If you ask me, based on his speaking and reading Arabic, this is Allah. But we will go with the Muslims. We just heard Mufti Ming saying, that the best creation is mankind. If there is any mankind, he is with such description. If there is any mankind, he have a chair between the heaven and the earth. Any Muslim can tell me? There is no human being. Even Muhammad right now is in the grave. So is a human being is the best of the creation according to Islam? No. This is false. This is absolutely false. I found the hadith, the one I want to show you, about Muhammad bowing down to the one who saw in the sky, and it says it clearly, this is the angel. So, if the mankind and Muhammad is the best of mankind, and the mankind is the best of all the creation, then how Muhammad is bowing down to the angel? And why the angel is sitting on a throne when he is just an angel? Read carefully.
Uh, I'm trying to find. You see, the Muslim, they took it off in the translation. Look, it says here that he bowed down. Here in English, I don't see it. Where did where he bow down? Let us see other. Uh. Let me try. Sometime the Muslims they translate something and they forgot to translate it in the same way in the other place. Uh, this is I'm just trying to find, maybe we can find something else. Here you see, it says he fled him in fear. <laughs> Why you flee? <laughs> and you know, when you say somebody thought, sitting on a throne, that means he have the authority. He is higher than Muhammad. Uh, let me go to... Let us see. <clears throat> and remember, Jibreel, he is the same person who come as his boyfriend, Dahil Kalbi. Let us see, let us see. Yeah, I will try to find this story. Until now, I cannot find it in English. And uh, actually, I saw it in video too. Uh, maybe I can find the video. I think it maybe it was the video of Mufti Ming. Let us see what happened. Mufti Mink. That would be good if we can find Mufti Mink video about it. Where, 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 where? Yeah, well, that will be a long list of uh, videos to look, you know. But I remember, I think it was him, he was mentioning how Muhammad, he fell on his face because he was terrified when he saw Jibreel. But anyway, the point is, as you see, Jibreel is on the chair in the throne. He is in the sky. 
the Quran describe Jibreel as the most mighty, which is description of God, not description of man. For man is not the mighty, you know. Uh, the, the translation here says the one with the great power, the one with the great power. Uh, who is the one with the great power? You see, when you say the one, it is, there's, that's mean there's no two. When you say the one, that's mean there's only one. Do we agree? Change the translator. Read with me. Does it say here the one with mighty in power? And then we will find the Muslims adding the word Jibreel. It is not in the Quran. Why they add Jibreel? Because this Quran is stupid and confusion, confusing. Because there is no way this is Jibreel. For Jibreel should not be sitting in a throne. Same time, the description says it clearly uh, how powerful he is. He is the only one have such a power, which means Allah don't have it. If he is Jibreel, he is the one sitting on the chair between the heaven and the earth. He is a free from defect in body and mind. This is the Muslim translation. Do you see it? And here it says it used the word istawa. And this is the exact word the Quran used to describe how Allah He sat on the chair. If I write down, I will take the word stawa, copy it. Put it in the Quran. You will see this is a word describe how Allah He sat on the chair. The Muslim they translate it as He live in Himself. Chapter 2, verse number 29. This is exactly the same word, stawa. Do you see it? So how the angel, how the human being is the best of the creation of Allah, and then we find that the angel Jibreel is the one, the Muslim call him the one with might, mighty power. But well, that is God. You see, if it says an angel with mighty power, I would say he is one of them, and they have mighty power, all of them. But the verse says the one, You see the word one? One mighty in power. And the verse behind it describe that this person, he is perfect. He perfect in the way he looked like, the create, you know, the, the, the appearance uh, uh, created uh, the mind, the, 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 the thinking, he's perfect. Do you see how we can conquer Islam? We did not even play, not even like 50 seconds of the video of this guy. We did not play 50 seconds. Everything they say is a stupid. In one hand, they say that Allah is the mighty in power. They, who is the only one in mighty in power? Allah. And then we find that this verse is about Jibreel. Solve it now. Who is the best of the creation of Allah? They say Adam, human. And now we find that no, because no human is perfect in mind, perfect in creation, and he is perfect in power. No human. Let us continue. Now, pause for a moment because I want to prove that to you to begin with. Think for a while uh -huh. of I find it funny that a Muslim asking us to think I forgot that the Quran says don't think any limb or organ of yours do you think it could be in another place besides where exactly it is 
take a look at your five fingers. These five fingers, exactly where they are, you know, the index finger, the thumb, if you had to change anything, you would never be able to compete with what is already there. Take See guys, the, the video is about who is Allah. The video is who is Allah. The guy is talking about thinking. So now we decide to become serious. And now he's telling us about fingers. Look at your fingers. Can you change them? You're putting, what is, what, this, is, this is not even good for teenage. I mean, this is stupid. What does this have to do with telling me who is Allah? Well, monkeys have fingers too. Most of the creatures actually, there's a lot of creatures, they have fingers. We are asking how you can prove to me Allah, you, and you say to me, think. And now look at your fingers. Take a look at your eyes. Where do you want to put them? Your ears? Put them in your ass. Where do you want to put them? I mean, this guy is trying to prove to us who is Allah. Look at your eyes. Where do you want to put them? What do I want to tell you bad news? Isn't it better if we have four eyes, one, two in the back and two in the front, so we can see everything around us? Isn't it better if we have four eyes, one in the left, one in the front, one in the back, one in the right? What this guy is talking about? Look at your eyes, where do you want to put them? This is how he proved to us who is Allah. He's, he's telling us who is Allah. Where do you want to put your eyes? Yes. Take a look at your lips, your teeth, your mouth. Your... Somebody saying, wasn't that a, a Francis Tiber is a Christian? No, my friend is a Muslim. He gave false papers to, to give him refugee. He is a coward like your prophet. He claimed to be Christian so he can get refugee papers, but he is from Idlib, he is from Syria, and he is Abdul. We got him busted. And you know, the Muslims, look at this. The Muslims, let us say for the sake of argument, there is somebody who is a dog. But if he is a dog, he is a dog like Muhammad. I mean, aren't you ashamed? You have a million stabbing, and then you say there is a guy, he is a Christian? He is not. They got him busted. He is a fraud. This is why they refuse him. Uh, Muslims who they have all the garbage of Muhammad. Muhammad, he sent people to stab people in their home. Abu Nafi, a man over the age of 90, he sent a person to borrow some food from him to assassinate him. Imagine, this is Muhammad, the one who killed babies, the one who raped children, and now they are saying, Do you see, there is a Christian. He is a Muslim like you. Mujahid. He gave himself false name so he can get refugee, and this is why they refuse him. They got him busted. We continue, Abdul Potato. Your tongue, your everything, subhanAllah. Where would you like to put it? Allah where, where you would like to put it, subhanAllah. Guys, and now we know who is Allah. Where you like to put your tongue? A Muslim is being serious now. Where you like to put your tongue. And that will prove to us who is Allah. We put it in the best possible place for you. Okay, where is the tongue of Allah located? <laughs> Any Muslim can tell me where is the tongue of Allah located? We created you, Allah says, and we created you in such an amazing way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest. Okay, now. How Allah, we know he is the greatest because the way you are created. But how we know that first he is the one who created us. Let us say we have the best way we are created. But what does this have to do with Allah? How you, how you prove to me now that this God, Allah, is the one who created me. Maybe it is Buddha. Maybe it's Mickey Mouse. 
Your description is so stupid. Did you bring us something new? Unfortunately, there are people who don't believe at all. They say, no, 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 there's no creator, there's no maker, there's nothing happening like this, you know, subhanAllah. Well, we're saying, did this just come about or just like that, you know? We're too sophisticated not to have had a maker. That maker, we believe, uh, we is not like... Is the video is about there is a maker or the video is about who is Allah? Who is a Muhammad and he dared to call me? And tell me who is Allah. As you see, they don't they don't know how to answer. I mean, the video title, who is Allah? Until now, he is telling us at a, making uh, making uh, a BMW. What does this have to do? We are asking who is Allah. We are not asking you. This is not this is not the topic. Who is the, let us say for the sake of argument, Allah is the maker. Still, we did not know who is Allah. If your father is a doctor and I ask you who is your father, you say to me, you don't you don't say to me the doctor. I say to you, who is your father? Doctor is what he do. Who is your father? They cannot answer. They are making up reasoning and this is the religion out of reasoning if allah is not the greatest how did islam spread so fast the answer for that is very simple you see and i like it how muslim they give allah a finger the only one who gave their god a finger is the muslims if you look at his anus he will be swollen if Allah is not the greatest, how did Islam spread too fast and conquer? You, you just told me how you're stupid. You just conquer. I mean, are you stupid or what? Islam did not spread unless you conquer. Even the Quran says so. When the victory of Allah came, they conquer Mecca. People, they enter into Islam like waves. So nobody is converting to Islam. People, they accepted Islam just to, to be safe from being killed. Hmm? And you are the one who used the word conquer, you idiot. And this is why I say you cannot find one Muslim is not suffering from a very low IQ. It's a must. It's part of the, like it's a package. Chapter 110, it says it clearly how Islam is spread. When you see when when he conquer when he conquer mecca people of mecca enter islam like waves by crowds so before that day nobody want to enter the sword in their neck everybody say shahada and that why you are stupid this is why none of those muslims who've been conquered they can explain to us why they are muslims look at you you are sitting like a potato. Why you don't call me and tell me who's Allah? Do you think this guy, guys, can tell us who is Allah? Why you don't call me, Mr. Finger? Go open the camera. I, I promise I will put you in the, in, the, in the screen. Put your finger up and tell me who's Allah. They don't know. The second you ask them who is Allah, they say what they say to you what he do, but none of what he do is proven to be true anyway. He's the one who created you, brother. Would you have a proof? With the Christian, the Jews, they have different God. They say he is the one who created them. The Hindus, the Buddhists, they have different gods. So who is Allah? They have no answer. They give you false speeches, silly answers, because they do not know who is their God. For how long I am right now I am live on air? An hour and four, and four minutes. Is that right or more? No Muslim called me to tell me who is Allah.
They are telling me, Allah, he makes shish kebab. Allah, he is the best to make hummus. Allah is the best to make barbecue. But who is Allah? Maybe we should try to find a better video than this. This guy getting boring. Let me look for my favorite, Abdul. Definition of Allah in Islam. There's a definition. Before posing my question, uh, I would like to thank the organizers for making such a brilliant... Okay, give me a break, yeah. Organizer. You're stupid to join, actually, it's such a thing. Anyway. Says what Allah is and also says what Allah is not. Huh. Besides knowing what God is, it is also important to know what God is not. Mm -hmm. So that if someone falsely claims that so-and-so is God, you can easily come to know this is a false claim. Uh -huh. As far as the reply to what is the definition of Allah, the best reply that any Muslim can give you is from the Quran, from Surah Ikhlas, chapter number... See, from the Quran, what is Allah from the Quran? The Quran, which is made by Muhammad, there is no witnesses. Okay, what's a chapter of Ikhlas saying? Tell us. 112, verse number 1 to 4, which says, Kul Allah ahad. Uh, guys, uh, is, say to me who is Allah. Say Allah is one of... What does have to I'm not asking you how many he is. I mean, do you see the stupidity? Did I say who is Allah's? I said who is Allah? Allah is a one name, not a name of many. So you answer the guy who asking you who is Allah. You say, say Allah is one of, and one of, that means he's many actually, there's many of him. Say he's Allah one and only. <laughs> Allah Samad, Allah the absolute and eternal. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. You know, the absolute and the eternal. Where do you get the sun flashing from? A Samad, it means a collection. This is an Aramaic word, not an, uh, an Arabic word. This is why in Arabic we say, which is coming from the Aramaic, Masmuda. Masmuda is, you know, like those uh, pig thing, you, you make a hole in it, you put your coins. That is Masmuda. A Samad is the one who is a collection of gods. He is the one who unite gods. The verse you gave me doesn't prove Allah is one anyway, because he is one of Qulhu Allahu Ahad. Say he is one of, not Ahad as one. Ahad cannot be one in Arabic or in, even in Hebrew. Muhammad the stupid, he is trying to copy the Jews when the Bible says, your God, O Israel, your God is Echad. Echad is Ahad, but Echad is not one in number, you idiot. <laughs> Do we have any Muslim can tell us something useful? So we are asking, with respect, we are called Al-Ahad, has the same meaning as Al-Wahid. That is your stupidity. Same time, when you say he is Al-Wahid, that is a stupid of you. Because if he is one as a person anyway, so why you call him Al Wahid? Just to show you how Muslims have a have a, have a you know I, I don't want to keep insulting I, uh, like uh, a human being, but a human being is an insult to himself. Look what you just said. Are you sure you are not paid by Christian prince? In Arabic. In Arabic. You add. Guys, do you remember the guy who said he is an author of books and turned to be he do not speak Arabic? Do you remember him? The potato who called me to promote his books and nobody's buying them. And the guy is writing a book about Arabic language, but he don't speak Arabic. <laughs> and I get him busted. If you remember, the same Abdul he said when he called me, he said the AL, which means Al, the one we see in the beginning here. Let us highlight it. L. Uh, let us zoom in more so people will laugh at you more. You see, I'm using your text, not my text. Thank you. L mean the. The. Why you want to use the if Ahad is one? 
If Allah is the only one, why you want to use that? You see, even in English, when you say the house, because there's many houses, so you decide to say the house to tell me that you are going to a certain house. Right? The tree, that means a specific tree. Uh, uh, the month of etc., that is a specific month. So L is the same in Arabic. It's a word mean that. In the Aramaic language mean God. So I will go with your language now. The one you are using today is Arabic as the word that. The one you understand. The Ahad. If Ahad mean one, how in the world you say the one? Any Muslim can tell me? Don't you say the Bible? Yeah, I can say, I say the Bible because there is many. There is Bible for uh, uh, computers. You search right now the word Bible in uh, in Amazon. There is Bible for computer. There is Bible for the, those language. There is Bible for the dictionary. People are in the word Bible for. Do you know what Bible mean? You don't even know what the word Bible mean because you're ignorant. Same time, the Bible is a book. Have a lot of books. So we are talking about an object. But we are talking about God. If there is many, Allah. If there is only one Allah, then why you are saying Al-Ahad? And you said, the word Al-Ahad mean Wahid. Okay, what Wahid mean? You will say to me one. Okay, but if he is one, that mean he is a number. If he is a number, that mean he, there is, he is one of many numbers because number is one of many numbers. One, there is after a two, and there is a three, and there is four, and there is five. In the Hebrew, it says Echad. Echad is not one as a number. It is one as a unity. So the husband and the wife, the husband, he leave his parents and he will become Echad with his wife. But they are not one person. Those are two human beings. The Bible called them Echad. Muhammad, he copied the word Echad. He put it in the Quran. And now your God looks stupid because that means Allah is not one as a person. Actually, if you go in the Quran and you search the word Ahad, you will find that all the Quran say ahad mean one off let me type it for you in the front of your eyes actually i will take the word he said and i will put it in the quran and now you will laugh with me this is the verse uh, uh, the Quran Ayuka was calling, quoting. Huh? I will copy it as it is in front of your eyes. Do you see it, guys? I'm copying it. And I will repaste it in the search engine as it is in the front of your eyes. Huh? I did not add. I did not take as it is. You will see always the word Ahad is coming as one of chapter 2, verse 102. It says, وَمَا يُعَلِّمَانِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ And they teach nothing no one except one off one off translation <laughs> they don't teach anyone you see what what i had mean anyone there's any and there's one so if there's only one then you don't say they don't teach anyone so what i had mean teaching anyone unless they say to him or to the one this is a trial from Allah. Do you see it? The angel, they taught anyone. This is what I had mean. This is one meaning. Let us show you the other meaning. Uh, chapter 2, verse number 136. It says here, 
لا نفرق بين أحد منهم. We don't differentiate between any of them. So what I mean, one of many. Chapter two, verse one thirty-six. Is that my translation? No. We don't make any dis distinction between any of them. So how I had it mean one, and we are not. We are saying any of them. <laughs> It mean one in the context? No, it doesn't mean because this is an Arabic word. It cannot mean anything else except this. I had always, you see, wahid, wahid mean one. I had mean one off. I mean, you are the stupid one who says to me, we use the word I had in the mean of wahid. That's mean it is not wahid. <laughs> is this your text? You said we use the word al ahad. Has the same meaning as al wahid. So why you are using al ahad if the meaning is if the if the purpose is al wahid? <laughs> Muhammad simply he is copying the Jews, copying the Old Testament. Oh, you Israel, your God is a God. He put it in the Quran, and now he is in trouble because this is make Allah more than one person. For a God is not one person; is a unity. He is an idiot. Now, still the question is valid. Who is Allah? The answer is, say he is one, according to Zakarnay. But who, who, who cares if he is one or seven or eleven? Who is Allah? Okay, I am one. And you are one. But this did not answer the question, who is Allah? And then, the Quran and Yuka is going to explain to you. Just wait. Beget not noisy begotten. Who care if he have children or he don't have a children? I'm asking you who's Allah. There is many people. Actually, hold on. Did the angel Jibreel begot and begotten? No. Do you see the stupidity? If Allah is saying to us he is God because he is begot and begotten not. Will Jibreel he begot and begotten not? He's not on any of those. Stupidity. Let us continue. Aren't we Abrahamic while you're attacking the you are not Abrahamic? Guys, those Muslims they keep lying to us, saying that they are Abrahamic. You forgot what Sheikh Uthman he said, my friend. Sheikh Uthman, he got you busted. I can play the video for you. This is why I have it in my intro. Muhammad was not Abrahamic. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> let us go to Sheikh Uthman, the ketchup boy. Don't tell me now Sheikh Uthman is not a Sheikh. You are the one who asked me before to debate him. You forgot? I remember. You said to me, debate him, Christian Prince, Sheikh Uthman. But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. <laughs> did you hear it? Your prophet did not know who is Gabriel is. Why? Because he did not come from Abrahamic faith. Why? Listen. The people of Mecca were pagan. The people of Mecca are pagan. So he is son of a pagan. All the people of Mecca are pagan, and Muhammad had nothing to do with Abraham, and he did not come from Abrahamic faith, which means Muhammad is not from Ishmael, as the Muslim they lie and they claim. So the Muslim, they are a bunch of liars when they speak about their prophet. He make mistakes. So you put Muslims, okay, can you name for me one Muslim who don't make mistakes? Pupu, your prophet. Why you don't call me? Guys, Sheikh Uthman make mistakes. Sheikh Uthman trying to convert a Christian to Islam by making mistakes, not lying. <laughs> He's making mistake. <laughs> oh boy. Someone saying uh, CP Sam David all some together. No, my friend, I don't have a I, I don't have partners. I am the same as Allah. I don't allow people in my kitchen, they will burn my food without talking about the names you mentioned. So a Muslim cannot 
Tell us who is Allah. Not a single Muslim knows even who is Allah. All what they say to you, funny answers, he is God. He's one. He's big. He's powerful. He forget. He forget not. In one, in one hand he's forget, in the other hand he forget not. They give you all kind of answers have nothing to do with the question. Who is Allah? I know by choosing this topic, no Muslim will dare to call me because we chose this topic before and not a single one dare to call us to tell us who is Allah. Nobody. Uh, there is nothing like him. This there is nothing like him. Solution. This is what the Old Testament says, nothing like God. But that doesn't tell us who is God. There's nothing like me. There's nothing like my finger. Even science proved that everybody have his own fingerprint. Does that mean my finger is God? I'm asking you who is Allah? You say to me, nothing like Allah. Right? Hey, my friend, the one you name me, their names, why you don't call them right now and tell them to join us or give me their Skype, I will call them. I, I want to watch them and call them. Can I call them live? Give me their names, give me their Skype. It's a four line definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, given in the glorious Quran. This is the touchstone of theology. It is the litmus test to identify any person says so and so candidate is God, if that candidate fits in this four line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate to be God. The first is Ul Huallahu Ahad. Okay, so say he is one. Well, the Krishna is one. There's no two Krishna. The Father is one. The Son is one. The Holy Spirit. There's no two Holy Spirit. There's no two Son. And there's no two father. This is the definition. So if you are one, we accept you, God. Okay, what else? Say it Allah one and only. Allah Samad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Lam yulid walam yulad. He begets not nor is begotten. Walam yakullahu kufana. There is nothing like him. For example, I'll give you an example. Give me an example. There are some human beings uh -huh. who say that Bhagawan Rajneesh is God. During question answer time, there was a Hindu brother who told me that if Hindus don't consider him to be God. I never said that the Hindus call Bhagavan Rajneesh to be God. There are many human beings who claim Bhagavan Rajneesh is God. Now I will give you a sample. Why do we use this negative also? Like say is Allah one and only is positive. Allah Samad, Allah the absolute eternal. Lam yalad wa lam yulad. He begets not nor is he begotten. Why do we But why you don't tell us why he don't begotten and why he cannot be God? You see, he said Allah is Samad, the Muslim translate the word Samad as the one who is dependent in himself, self-sufficient. Uh, 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 but the Quran says the opposite. The Quran says that Allah cannot have a son unless he have a girlfriend. So now we know why Allah don't have a children. Not because Allah, he can have a children. No. He cannot. He need a girlfriend. So how the Muslim they say, if you have such a definition of you that you are self-sufficient, you are God. But your God cannot have a son without a girlfriend. My God, he can have a son and he don't have a girlfriend. No Christian believed that Mary, she was the wife of God. All the Christian, even you Muhammadan, believe that Mary, she was a virgin. So how the originator of the heaven and the earth, he can be the originator of the heaven and the earth, yet he cannot originate a son unless he have a girlfriend. Anyone can tell me? If Allah the originator of the heaven and he is a question in his ability, you see, he did not say, well, you know, they say I have a son, I say I don't, that's it. No, he is the one who said, how can he 
Listen, how can is what? Is a questioning for the ability, correct? If somebody call me and say, hey, Christian, do you have a son? I can be sarcastic with him and say, how I can have a son and I don't have a wife. Are you stupid? Can I have a son if I don't have a woman in my bed? Not only I have to have a woman, I have to have a woman and have sex with her. Not a woman sitting next to me. So if Allah is God, then why he is questioning his ability to have a son without having a, a woman? A woman to have sex with, not to have a woman next to him in the couch. How he can be the one who created everything, yet he cannot create a son, and yet he need a wife to create a son. So he cannot be the creator. In different verse in the Quran, Muhammad he said, because he claimed that's Allah, but this we know that Muhammad is fabricating things. Allah supposedly said in chapter 21, verse number 17, had we intended to take a pastime between two brackets, i.e. a wife or a son, etc., we could surely have taken it from us. Do you see how Muhammad, he keep making poo-poo? How Allah is one, and then Allah want to take a partner from us. Are you with me? How Allah is God, and he is not a man, and now he is take, talking about taking a wife. Sir, he's saying, you got busted. Why would Allah want to have a son? Why would Allah want to have Jibreel? Why would Allah want to have Isa? Why would Allah want to have anything? If you ask this question, then you have to ask all of them, you are stupid like your prophet. Why would Allah have a shin? Why would Allah have five fingers? Why Allah have a mouth? Can't he speak from his anus? I mean, do we need, do we need to have two, uh, two, two opening? Just one, as long as he don't do poo poo. Why he have two hands? Why he have five fingers? Why he have a shin? I thought you don't need anything. Those are physical object and we need them so we can do things with them. So your God, he cannot do things unless he have hands. Isn't it the stupid Quran says that Allah created Adam by his two hands. Allah could not create Adam by his nose or his mouth or his tail. Allah, he created Adam by his two hands. Prove me wrong. You know, when the Muhammadan, they, 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 uh, 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 they say something about their God, we laugh. And this is why they don't dare to, to, to call and, and get me, you want to get me, but get me, call me. Why you don't call me as long as it's so easy? Why all your scholars don't, don't dare? How Allah God, and now he is using his two hands. I'm using your logic. The Quran says if Allah want to create something, he says to it be, and it would be. Wonderful. We ask before Muslims, did Allah say be after he used his hand or uh, before he uses his hand? <laughs> huh? Why Allah is using, why he have hands? I thought Allah, he has power by saying be. And why he say be anyway? Can't he use like his mind without saying it?
Yeah, exactly. The lion, he, according to Muhammad, the lion, he sneezed and a cat came from his mouth so she can chase the mice in the ship of Noah. Muhammad is talking. Any Muslim can answer us? No one like Allah. Okay, here we go. Allah using his hands. To do what? To create. Well, isn't it Jesus according to the Quran? He made the mud. And then he breathed into the mud. And then he created the bird. You will notice that the Quran and Yuka, he skipped that Allah is the creator because now we know that Jesus is the creator according to the Quran. The second you ask the Muslim a serious question, the same second they get silly and stupid and they avoid the question. The guy is asking you who is Allah. You say to him he's one. Do I care if he's one or ten? We know if the name says or he's, he's one, that's it. You know, if we add S at the end in English, that's mean there is many gods. Hmm? Who's Allah? Let them know. What do you know about this God? Nothing. Not to forget to mention. Yeah, uh, Mohan is asking, why Allah use his hand? Don't he have his... Uh, uh, mind no Allah don't have a mind if you say actually that to Muslim they will kill you <laughs> no Muslim dare to say Allah have a mind do you know that <laughs> ask them hey Muslims anyone support the idea that Allah have a mind they don't dare they dare to say he has a hand but they don't dare to say he have a mind Allah don't have a mind. Allah have hands. Any Muslim can help this gentleman here? Do Allah have a mind? He don't. And there is a very easy way to prove Allah cannot be a person who have a mind. Why? You know, don't the Muslim they say that Allah He wrote His word and His book in a tablet? He wrote it in a tablet. And this tablet, nobody can touch it, nobody can see it. Okay. So now, Allah He wrote His book in a tablet. What is the purpose? It says in Arabic, Lawhun Mahfuz, which means preserve, protected tablet. So the, the point of it is what? Is a preservation, correct? But how you, Allah, need to preserve it by writing it down. And nobody can read it except you. That means you have a short memory. You can't remember what you said before. And you need a tablet. Otherwise, what the tablet for? You see, if this is a tablet he gave, like God gave tablet to Moses, well, this is to Moses. Not to forget to mention, by the way, Muhammad the idiot, he, th he, he told the Muslims that Allah, he gave Moses the Torah in tablet, all the Torah, not 10 commandments, all the Torah. So imagine how many trucks of tablet rocks Moses used to carry. He spent his life carrying rocks. All the Torah, God gave him to him, give it to him in tablet. Are you sure? <laughs> so as you see, here it says that this Quran is inscribed in a preserved tablet. Where the tablet is between the two eyes of the angel Israfil. Why he put Allah, why Allah he put the tablet between the angel eyes so, so Israfil cannot see it. I mean, do you see the security? Are you stupid or what? Well, Israel, he cannot see it, but the angel in front of him, he can read it. Are you with me, guys? I mean, this is stupidity. If I put 
the tablet between the eyes of the angel Israfil. Wonderful. Now, Israfil cannot see it. Wonderful. But the guy, the angel in front of him, he can read it. So, what kind of a security the security is? By the way, if we ask the Muslims where Muhammad he got the name Israfil, they don't know. What Israfil mean? They don't know. They stole that from the Jews. What Jibreel mean? They don't know. Mikael, they do not know. They do not know. What this religion knows? Nothing. He's a thief. Until now, zero Muslim tried to contact me. The only one we have him contacted me is somebody. He left Islam. Hmm? Any Muhammadan? Let's go to Ibn Kathir and read the interpretation for this verse, shall we? So we love together. Maybe Christian Prince has given you false information. Chapter 85, verse number 22. All right. 85, 22. Let us love together at the Hocus Focus Mokos Tokas Palafel of Muhammad. All right. Look at this. They took it off. Guys, Ibn Kathir, interpretation for the verse is so long. They took it off. There's nothing here about Israfil. Nothing. Nothing about Allah. He put it between his eyes. I don't see it. None. Let us go to Ibn Kathir in Arabic then. Just to show you why you cannot trust Muslims when they translate to you any book of their books. Ibn Kathir in Arabic, I have all the books collection here in my shelf, is 1,000 times bigger than what they have in English. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And this is the description of Al-Lawh Al-Mahfuz. Page number one. It says here, uh, let us see. I will use Google Translation to translate. But let us see if we can find. Here we go. It says here, "Waqala ibn Abi Hatim, blah 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 blah." He said, etc. That Allah He put the preserved tablet between the two eyes of Israfil. And he have no permission to look at it. How he can look at it? It's between his two eyes. Maybe he have an eyes of lizard. His eyes is popping out. Same time here it describe which we cannot find in English. The English they took it off. What is the tablet is made of? It is a white tablet made of a flower. The edge of it covered by rubies 
and pearls. Red rubies. And the right which wrote on the tablet is pen of light. And the words of it is written connected to the throne. And the origin of it is coming from the lap of an angel. Anyone understand anything? Let us use the Google translation. And here you need to ask yourself, how come this is not in the English translation of Ibn Kathir? Here we go. The preserved tablet is on Israfil forehead. Ibn Abu Hatim said, uh, my father told us from, 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 okay? So Allah, uh, the preserved tab tablet, uh, he sent down whatever he was. Oh, where, where is the eyes? I want to see the eyes. We saw the forehead. I think we skipped. It should say... Let us see. Yeah, and the translation is not coming. So anyway, he put it in his forehead between his two eyes, and he have no permission to look at it. He have no permission to look at it. And here it says, describing the tablet, what it's made of. The tablet is a white pearl. Its length between the heaven and the earth, and this is Google translation, as you know. And look how big the tablet. All of this is between the, the, the eyes of the angel. It's between the east and the west. Its edges, brother, is made of a pearl and a, a, a sapphires. And you know, like here, they are adding more spice to that story. Here it says, Allah, he preserved the tablet in a white pearl with pages are red rubies. <laughs> his pen is light. His book is light for God in which every day he created 60 and the third 300 moments. He created, provided, kill, kills, gives life, honor, immunity. <laughs> Allah is making a book now. And Allah, he preserved the book between the, this is why the angel to breathe, he have a cross eyes. I mean, imagine you are an angel trying to spy at what Allah, he put between your two eyes. You are being so curious. Did you ask yourself why Allah, he put the, 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 uh, uh, the book between the two eyes of, of uh, Israfil? Any Muslim can tell me? Isn't this clear that he don't trust him? He put it, it says here, you see, in the in, in the in the translation we could not find it it says here between the two eyes of israel and he is not allowed to look at it why because obviously allah do not trust israel israel is a bad boy so allah was looking where i'm going to put the tablet if I put it in his lap, he will look at it. If I put it in his hand, he will read it. So he come with a smart idea. I put it between his two eyes. Allah, what about you put it in his back, in his ass, in his back head? I mean, as long as this angel is so big to the point between his two eyes, the tablet itself is from the east to the west. The distance between the earth and the heaven. If if the distance between the two eyes of the angel Israfil fit for that tablet, that means his head is so big. Why you put it there? What about you put it in his mouth? His nose? Exactly, Tim. I like that. Hold on. Tim, he helped us with the with the uh, description of the where is the tablet now? This is the tablet.
Let us zoom in. So if Allah is Almighty God, why he even he need to preserve a tablet? Can't he preserve it without making a tablet? Can't he preserve his word without putting it in such a way between the two eyes of an angel? Do Allah, can Allah, what about put it in you with you? Which is one better? Put it with Allah or put it with, with the, the angel Israfil. And obviously he don't trust Israfil because he put it between his two eyes. Some days I feel like that picture. I wonder how your wife she think about you then. Oh, I get it. I think you feel like this when your wife she show you the bill of the credit card at the end of the, the month of shopping. Yeah. Do we have any Muhammadan? How would, and what is what is the question? Who is Allah? What does this have to do with who is Allah? What we learn now that Allah he need to preserve tablet. He can he have a short memory. I will write if you give me your phone number. I have to write it down. I cannot remember all numbers. You don't remember even your own credit card. You remember maybe your number, maybe your mother number, maybe somebody you call, and even even your these days because people they use the phone memory. Nobody remember the number of anyone. And you know when the Muslim they say that Allah he have a preserved book do he have the abrogated version of it or the unabrogated version of it do Allah delete verses from the preserved book too there is other way to prove that Allah is God let us go there Allah is God for the following reason. When I was a kid, I liked to watch cartoon. And cartoon have a ifrit. Anyone knows what a ifrit? Who of you do not know what is a freed? What is the Muslim boy? Can you tell the audience what is a freed? Any Muslim can tell us what the heck is this? A freed? Muhammad, he took stories from five grade children's. And he put it in his Quran. Let me introduce to you chapter 37, verse number 39, 27, sorry, where Solomon, he have a freed. And the reason he is a freed, he is a genie in the bottle. But he is so fast, brother. Let me introduce Afrid for you. Please show respect. Otherwise, he can come to you. And he told Suleiman, I can go and steal the throne of Balkis by before you blink your eyes. <laughs> Afrid. Afrito, Afrito, and they say to you, who can write Quran like the Quran? Who can make Quran like the Quran? Nobody. Afrit. Solomon, he have a Afrit. This Afrit is a thief. He told Solomon, 
If, uh, listen, I can go and steal her throne. I mean, look, look at the thieves. They made Solomon as a thief. I can go and bring you everything she have before even you blink your eye. Look how so fast this guy is. Before he blink his eye, the Afrit can bring her throne, her chair, her the dollars, the money, the credit card. He's so fast. Are you kidding me? This is why he is a Afrit. Look what he said to him. Afrit between two bracket. This the Muslim interpretation now. He's a strong, strong. He's a strong. Okay, listen carefully. This is a story written in the tablet by who? By Allah. Ah, okay. And Afrit who is a strong from the jinn. Oh, he's from the jinn. Now we know his family too. Said, I will bring it to you before you raise from your place. Man. The Muslim Suleiman, he is a thief like the Muslim Muhammad. The first thing they start thinking of after he told them that her throne is made of gold is how to steal the throne. How? By Afrit, brother. The Afrit, this is not a joke. This is a very fast creature. I mean, ask me, when I was in school, the teacher, she said to me, you are Afrit, because I was a troublemaker. And I don't know what Afrit is. Like you are five years old and what the heck is Afrit is this? Afrit, this child is Afrit. And now we know where it's coming from. And where is the Afrit is coming from? Is it from the legion of the Hindus? Afrit, genie and the bow. The Persian, the Hindus, the Indian. The neighbor, she come to my mom, she don't know my name. She said to her, well, your son, the Afrit, he threw the uh, the uh, the football at my window. She said, which one? She said, Afrit. <laughs> my mom right now, she know, she know which one. She said, okay, okay, I was sorry. And did he break the window? I will pay for it. <laughs> so brother and sisters, how Muhammad, he is not a true prophet, and how Allah is not, not a true God, and he have a afrit, he can steal a chair of somebody else so fast before even you move your ass or blink your eyes. Read here carefully. One with whom was knowledge of scriptures. Ooh, this guy have a knowledge of scriptures. He said to him, <laughs> I will bring it to you within the twinkling of an eye. <laughs> Man, it take Allah 1,000 years to send his message down to Muhammad. That's what Allah said. But it take the Afrit a, a second a twink of an eye to go all the way from Jerusalem to Yemen to go and come back and not only that he is carrying the throne a bunch of thieves and then Suleiman he said to them hmm so it placed before him he said this is by the grace of my Allah to test me whether I am a grateful or ungrateful. And whoever is grateful truly is a gratitude. For what uh, they, they are talking about stealing the money of a woman, and now they are talking about grateful. How in the world? Somebody, he is a Christian, he don't want to convert to Islam.
And the funny, Suleiman is the one who asked for her chair. Hey, buddy, uh, who of you can go and get me her chair? Look at this guy. He's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's the part of the Caribbean. I mean, where is the morality? Why you are why why Solomon wanna take her chair? The Muslim they say to you that in Islam theft is haram, haram, brother, haram. Okay, a woman she have a chair made of gold. She is a queen. Why the Prophet of Allah is asking the people, who of you can go and get me her chair? Hmm? Hey, people, who of you can get me uh, the microwave from uh, uh, the house of a flying fish? Any one of you? I don't have a microwave. I don't use it, just joking. I mean, this is a prophet of God is asking his gang who want to go and steal a chair of a woman? Well, this is Islam. And this is the chapter of what? This is the chapter of the ants. And don't ask me about the ants. The story is getting complicated. There's a bird. His name is Al Hudhud. I don't know, guys, if you have time. People, do you have time? Do you have time to tell you a story or, if you have, or you have no time? I don't know if they have time or not. God, this story is so complicated. Many of you cannot even handle it. Solomon Solomon chicken the chicken hold on did I say this Solomon chicken the chicken what kind of language is that chicken the chicken what the heck English is funny Solomon chicken the chicken 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 chico chicago which one is a chicken foo first chicken 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 the chicken you go to the airplane, they say chicken. And then they set us on the airplane like a chicken. And they say to us, put the mask, please. And then we are like a chicken, literally, next to each other. And then all the chicken, they take the mask from his their mouth and they get sick. Uh, oh, no, don't say that. It is, you cannot take the mask. You can take it only when you are eating. So 400 people taking the mask off, eating in the same time, and it's okay. But remember, you have to keep six foot distance between each other. Okay, anyway, stupidity is amazing. So, chicken the chicken, Solomon, he noticed that the hoopoe, the bird, is missing. You are a king of a great kingdom. Your army all the way from Jerusalem to Persia. Even in some Muslim book, they say to Kharasan, to all the way actually to, to Bukhara. To Afghanistan. And now there is one bird is missing. Guys, can you can you notice with me how strong the memory of Solomon? One bird is missing. He said to himself, What the heck? Where is this bird is gone? A bird is gone without permission? He inspected the birds. He have an army of birds. He noticed one is missing. Do you see how good his vision is? How good his... One bird is missing. According to Muslims, the army of... According to the Quran, the army of Suleiman contain quarter of a human, quarter of a genie, quarter of a birds, etc. 
and there's one bird is missing. And then Suleiman, he said, I don't know if this is good to share with you because many of you have a sensitive, you know, once I was buying uh, uh, something to kill, uh, there's a mice into my garage. So I wanted to buy something to kill mice. And there was a person writing a review says, oh, this is horrible. This is inhumane. I was tortured when I saw how this mice die. I was dying laughing. I mean, what kind of a person is a man? You know, he have his picture there. He was tortured when he saw the mice, how he's dying. Man, the mice, he's like, well, this is not, I'm not going to buy it. This should not be in Amazon. Like long drama. I mean, he, he, the guy did not stay for 10 days. He saw, but he ate a chicken. He, but he didn't want to see how the mice uh, die. This is any human. This is one of the funny things about humane and any human. But anyway, welcome to the stupidity. So he inspected the birds and he found one bird is missing. And you know what? When one bird is missing, that means not two birds. That means one bird. And so the man, he decided to do the following. I will surely punish him. Severe torment. Or you know what? Slaughter the son of Muta. Unless he bring me a clean reason. Hmm. And then the hoopoo stayed not long, thanks to Allah. He came back and he said, I brought you some news. Don't get angry with me and don't burn the fuse. Commercial break. If you have a fuse problem in your car, call us immediately. We have Islamic fuse. It's already burned. So you will never be worried about anything to be burned. For it's burned already. Hello. End of commercial. I found a woman. I found a woman. Ruling over them. She has given all things, iPad, notepad, iPhone 17, laptop, computer, and eyelashes. I found her and her people worshipping the sun instead of Allah. Stop. By the way, even this information is false. Because now the, the, the scientists discover that those, this city, the temple of uh, the used to worship. Uh, I'm going by the Quran now. They worship the moon god, which is Allah. Allah. They worship Allah. This is why the name of the temple there is Al-Makkah, which means Mecca. So Mecca is a counterfeit of the temple of Al-Makkah, which is Allah temple the moon god we continue so the guy he came and uh, you know thanks to Allah he gave him a good reason he found the women she have no hair if you read the more she have no hair in her legs because as you know Middle Eastern women she have a lot of a lot of hair me myself I was kicked from the swimming pool many times sir you can swim here please wearing your clothes take off your fur you idiot this is my hair what's wrong with you you know they don't think that we are like Middle Eastern, like a human, like the rest, you know, because we have a lot of hair. Harry Potter, you know, actually the name of the movie Harry Potter is coming from us, you know. Anyway, so I found her and her people worshiping the sun. And then right away, they decide to steal the chair of the women. How in the world this is not made by God? It must be from God. Hmm? Are you telling me? Hey, hold on, talking about uh, talking about Al Hudhud, chapter 27, 27, 20, verse number twenty. I want to show you something very funny. They asked Muhammad, 
what this bird he do? I mean, why this bird is going around? He said that this bird can see what nobody can see. He can see even under the ground. So there was an argument between an Arab guy, obviously he's smart, with the cousin of Muhammad ibn Abbas. Let me find you the reference so we can read and laugh together. This is one of the earliest debates. Muslims, they face and they got busted immediately. Let us see. Let us read together. Mujahid said, Ibn Jurayr said, from Fla 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 said, everybody said, you know, okay, that the Hupu would look for water for him. For who? For Suleiman. In the ver various satrat of the earth, just as a man look for a thing in the surface of the earth, he would know just how far below the surface the water was when the hoopoo showed him where the water was, Suleiman would command the jinn to dig, dig here. So the, the bird he showed him where, the, the, the bird he can see under the ground, like, you know, 100 meter, 200 meter, no problem, dig here. He can see it. He can see the water. So he ordered the genie to dig in that place. And they would have brought water from the depth of the earth. One day, Suleiman, he went to some open land and checked on the birds, and he could not find this bird. So we told you he threatened him, he will kill him if he did not give him a good reason. But look what happened here. An Arab guy, one day, it says here, Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, told a similar story among the people. Was a man... The Muslim, they call anyone he was getting Islam busted Khawarij. is outsider, you know, like he, obviously he don't believe. Who's a man was Nafia ibn al-Azraq. This man, his name is Nafia. So now his name is written in history. He got Muhammad busted in early age. When often used to raise obje objection to Ibn Abbas, he said to him, Stop! Stop Ibn Abbas! I don't know if I need the music for this one. We should have a uh, music for this one. Stop. Stop, Ibn Abbas. You will be defeated today. Ibn Abbas said, why? Why? Nafa said, ha, ha, ha. You are telling us that the hoopu can see water beneath the ground? But, but any boy, any boy can put some seed in a trap and cover the trap with dirt in the film music. And the hoopu will come and take the seed. So the boy can catch him in the trap. Do you see how stupid Muhammad is? The guy, he said to him, listen, listen, Ibn Abbas. I mean, your, your lies and your prophet lies is bigger than, than the ass of, of, of Khadija. You are telling us that this bird can see way down under the ground, see water. Yet a little kid, he can put some seed next to the trap and he covered the trap by dirt and then the bird walk and then boom bungo we get the we get the bird so how come he can see the water under the ground but he cannot see the stupid trap look how ibn abbas he refuted the guy he started cursing him ibn abbas said if it is not the fact that this man would go and tell others that he had defeated ibn abbas in argument so he admitted I would not even answer. Then, now, suppose you now he's answering. Look how you answer. He said, he said to him, to Nafia, 
A wee to you when the decree strike a person, his eyes become blind and he lose all cushion. Nafi I said, okay, okay, hold on, okay, 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 okay. Inside the Ibn Abbas start cursing the guy, threatening him by Allah. The guy he said, okay, okay, then I by Allah I will never dispute with you again. <laughs> But do you see, even the book of Ibn Kathir admit that the Quran argument defeated by this man. Ibn Abbas said, Ibn Abbas said, if not, it was not, for the fact that this man would go and tell others that he had defeated Ibn Abbas in the argument. But the argument is about what? The argument about the Quran. Do you see it? I will never dispute with you concerning the Quran. This reminds me of Mimi Hijab speaking to Borat. He said to him, the Quran says, if this is a book made by other than Allah, you will find in it a lot of contradiction. Borat Rahman, he said to him, Rahman, he said, well, I have a yellow pages from Imarat in Arabic and has no zero contradiction doesn't have to be from Allah. <laughs> this is how silly, okay, so now we knew who is Allah. They could, they could not prove to us that Allah is God. My Skype is open, all those hours as zero Muslim call me. They will never call me when I'm speaking about this topic. Now we knew that Allah is a fairy tale storyteller, stupid donkey. Aka Muhammad, this is cannot be from God. I mean, this is so stupid. And you will notice that Suleiman he have all those things. Hmm? Muhammad he have none of them. Why Allah don't give Muhammad the bird? Give him the flying horse, give him a, uh, like a part of the flying carpet. Suleiman have the genies, they dig for him, divers who they are genie, shaitan. And then the end of the story, actually, it's very funny. I don't know if you know the story. When shaitan, he came and he took the look of Suleiman and he started doing boom, boom to the wife of Suleiman. Can you believe it? Muhammad trained the Muslims that Suleiman, his wife, was sleeping with the shaitan. And shaitan, he was so good in bed. And this is how the wives of Suleiman noticed that this is not Suleiman. He looked like Suleiman. So they told the elders, there is something fishy about Suleiman. He said to them, what? He said, he's so good in bed. What do you mean? He never take a break. What do you mean? Dargan, 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 dargan. What do you mean? Dargan, dargan, dargan. Uh, can you explain more? You idiot. He is so, so good. Never stop. Do you understand? Never, never. Never. Boom, 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 boom. The elder then, they met a meeting. And they said to themselves, how come Suleiman, he have a penis like this? That's impossible. Never stop. And then the shaitan, he knew now that they are suspecting him. So he took the ring of Suleiman and he flee. And then he went to a far away island. Uh, and he throw the ring of the on the ocean. And then, brother and sisters, Suleiman at that time he was poor. He was working as a porter, not a Harry, Harry Potter, no the porter, the one who carry things for you, like in the airport or in the port. So he saw a fisherman. Should I show you the story? Hey kids, do you like to hear it? Who here is five years old? The Muslim is trying to prove to us that Muhammad and Allah is God. And those are their stories. 
brother and sisters, Prophet of Allah, he tell only the truth, only. So Suleiman, may Allah bless him, he start working as a putter. And he's poor, homeless. He found a woman, she is poor too. He married her. Beautiful life, simple life. High five. And then, brother, one day he saw a fisherman or somebody he bought fish. So Suleiman, he said to the man, uh, okay, sorry, uh, can I help you? In return, you give me two fish. Look how Suleiman becomes so humble from a king to a person hoping to get two fish. Me, myself, I don't mind two sardines. So, can I help you to reach the bank, the river of the bank? He reached the bank of the river and he saw a person fishing. He said to him, shall I help you in the return of two fishes? The man said, agreed. That was the lucky day of Suleiman. You never know how your lucky day can come. So Suleiman helped him in catching the fish. How you can help him cutting the fish? No question. The fisherman gave him two fishes as his wages. Suleiman thanks Allah when he cut open the fish, he found the ring in the fish stomach. <laughs> and those, and this is the one who Allah, nothing like him, brother. Nothing like Muhammad, nothing like Allah, nothing like the Quran. I mean, who can? And they said, you can make Quran like this. So he found the ring, and now he become again a king. Tutti truti, time for you to sleep. Uh, what the heck is that? They said, no. You know, after he opened the fish stomach, the fish was cooked. Look, look, read, read with me. He found the ring in the stomach. Why in the stomach, man? I mean, this is disgusting. What about she put it under her tongue? I mean, come on, at the end of the day, this is the ring of Solomon. No, brother, we have to be logical. Islam is very logical. The ring go in the stomach, but cannot go from the anus because the anus of the fish is so small. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So he kept it aside. And thanks Allah, he cleaned the fish. Look, the guy, he don't even care. He just get the ring who can control, control the kingdom and make him a king again. He continued cleaning the fish. And it's not his wife cleaning the fish. He is cleaning the fish. Look, 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 look. He brought it home. Uh, he is cleaning the fish outside. His wife become very happy and said, I wish to call my parents and show them that you have worked hard and earned sustenance. Uh, this guy, he was lazy all the time. Finally, he got to fish to the point she want to call her parents. The fish was cooked and Suleiman called his in-laws they ate from the fish. So the man said to them, Would you recognize me? What? They, they came to the house eating with him, and now he's asking him, Would you recognize me? They said, No, we have not seen you at all. So the man took out the ring. If, 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 if. See, he put the ring. They cannot recognize him. He took off the ring, they can see him normally again. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. I know many of you, your husband doesn't look good at all. And now many of you will go to Amazon to purchase that ring. And maybe many of you, his wife don't look good at all. And now you wanna find a ring like that. Maybe she can disappear from your face. I'm just good, joking, joking, you know. I, I know it's not a good joke. I heard it from Joe Biden. You know the thing. So that moment, all the birds 
and the genie who ho, 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 came to him and become obedient to him, acknowledging his kingship. Chicken, dogs walk, 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 walk from everywhere. They start coming nonstop. Genies, I mean, all is coming to the poor house in the middle of the town. And then the brother, they come and they acknowledge his kingship. He, he like, uh, God save the king. But in the like in the language of the dogs, like walk, 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 walk. Like, you know, and the chicken like walk, 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 walk. And then you can like you know can just you know yeah use your imagination, which is if you have any anyway. I mean, who can beat Muhammad in the imagination? None of you. So like, anyway, true story, true story. And then he brought his wife along with her parents to the city of Istikhar. What the heck? What is that? And all his Shias, oh, those are Shias, <laughs> gathered around him and become very happy, which means Shia supporters, you know. Their difficulty of his absence vanished because remember, the shaitan took his look, he started being boom to his wife, he took his ring, and now he became the king. Uh -huh, the whole story. Suleiman was in the bathroom, he always leave his ring with his wife, her name is Ajarada, and then shaitan, he come to Ajarada, he, he, he came in the look of um, uh, Suleiman, look like it's easy. I mean, Allah, he cloned Isa, so we have now two Isa. Allah, he cloned Jibreel. We have two Jibreel. Shaitan, he cloned Jibreel. We have three Jibreel. And now Shaitan, he cloned Solomon. So we have two Solomon. And he, when the uh, Solomon was in the bathroom, Solomon, he came to the wife. He said to her, give me the ring. She looked at him. He looked like Solomon. So he gave him the ring. He wore the ring. He became the king. And then Solomon was kicked from the place because he don't look like a king no more because he don't have the ring. Very simple. So they become very happy and their difficulty vanished. He ruled for long, long period of the death. And when the death approached, okay, he appointed Asif ibn Bakharaya. Asif, the uh, Suleiman, he have a son, his name is Asif. He's an Arab guy. <laughs> anyway, anyway. All right, how do you mean Asif? Uh, by the order of Allah, he is his successor. His followers always preferred to Asif to solve their problem. Okay, hold on. Uh, I don't know if I read for you more stories because things is getting really complicated here. All right. Okay. Here it's talking about the flying carpet. I mean, I mean, this story is so beautiful. I don't know how many of you would like to convert to Islam. And as you know, Allah can be known by science, by flying carpet. The ring of Solomon, the penis of Satan. Oh, what about you know when they spoke about his uh, ability of sex, that he no way can do that. I find that strange because is it Muhammad? He said that Suleiman he have sex with ninety nine women in one night. So why the wives of Suleiman were confused about how good he is in bed? Let us see. Find the hadith. He have sex with 100 women. Where is the 100 women? Okay, hold on. This is a very beautiful story, by the way. It can help you uh, to, you know, to do the right thing when you do intercourse. I want to teach you something before you leave today, so you can enjoy your sexual life and do it correctly. 
I mean, uh, my stories are really priceless. If you think about it, I mean, you go to the shrink, they can charge you out of money. I'm giving you all those things for free. What's wrong with people? You know? Okay, let us see. Uh, yeah, this is the hadith. So the story about the wives of Suleiman, they notice that their husband is so not good, uh, the shaitan is so good, better than their husband. Then you ask yourself, I mean, so what Muhammad is talking about, he can have sex with 100 women. Look, the translation here, there's no translation. Let us see a different one. Hmm, this one here. Allah Messenger said, once Solomon, son of David, said by Allah, Today, I will F 100 women. Each one, she will give me a mujahid, terrorist, who can go and fight for the sake of Allah. Which, you know, if you think about it, I mean, it's an acceptable number. You know, we Middle Eastern, we can do even, like I remember my grandfather, I don't know, I think he did like 200 minus one. Yeah, yeah, I think 200. Yeah, I think, yeah. I'm not sure, like maybe 200, 201 minus one. My memory, I don't remember because they were lining up and they are coming like one after one, one after one. And when he finished, I said to him, grandfather, aren't you tired in this age? He said, where is the gym? He want to go to the gym, you believe it? After 200 women, he want to go to the gym. So I'm not surprised that Suleiman, he can do 100. That's simple, you know, I mean, come on. I mean, that's a big deal. What a big deal. This is very, like, this is very normal, you know, for Middle Eastern. This is why they are number one in the world who buy Viagra, because they are so good in bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, okay. Now, listen. Allah Messenger said, when Suleiman, son of David, he, he said, tonight I will have sexual intercourse with 100 or 99, you know, Muhammad is not sure, you know. Yeah, he's not sure. 100, 99, 99 and a quarter. You know, he's not sure. Allah did not, did, Allah did not tell him an exact number. Like, Allah told me 100. Allah said to you, too. Allah said to you 199 or 99. Allah said that. Mm. Okay. Women, each of who will give birth to a night. This guy, he if, oh, it's a boy. That's it. There's no question. Boom, boom, it's a boy. You know, he in one night, bingo. You know, like, chick, 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 chick. And the kids are coming like it's unbelievable. True story. Who will fight in Allah cause. On that, i.e., uh, he, for, uh, he forgot, you know, uh, on and that, i.e., if Allah wills. But he did not say Allah willing. Look at this. Suleiman now, he started ifing those women, excuse my language, and he forgot say Allah is willing. How you do such a mistake, you idiot? How in the world you do such a mistake? Therefore, only one of those women conceived and gave birth to a half man. That is Lili Dawa. Now we know who is his father. So, Listen carefully. Never start having sex with 100 women and you don't say, Inshallah. Do you remember when I asked uh, Mimi Hijab why I don't say, Inshallah? Many of you do not know why I was insisting. What kind of uh, Muslims, they start anything. They want to debate me without saying, Inshallah. Muslim, they knew what I'm talking about. He never say, Inshallah. And if somebody says, what a big deal. You see, it's a big deal in Islam. In Islam, it's a big deal. This is a prophet of God. He forgot to say, inshallah, he have sex with 100 women. The guy was busy non-stop women after women after women. And then after all those women he have sex with, Allah punished him and he gave him Mimi Hijab, half man. Why? Because he forgot to say, inshallah. How many of you, you do such a mistake every day? How many of you, 
You do such a horrible mistake. Do you want to have a half man child? You want that to happen to you? From now on, your wife, she take off her clothes. You are ready to go and to play bing bong. What do you say? Insha'Allah. You say Insha'Allah, your boom boom will boom. You don't say Insha'Allah, your boom boom will not bloom. Do you see how powerful the knowledge of a prophet Muhammad? He knew, and look this guy, to this night, okay, what about the night before it? This night you decide to F all these women, what happened the night? I mean, you have all the lifetime, you know, to do sex, just to, no, this night, that's it. He decided this night he want to do jihad. This night is for if and for Allah. I don't care. This night, you know, like he said. <laughs> I mean, when those people listen to Muhammad and the, the Muslim, they say to you, the Arab didn't believe him. And they say to him, this is not my fairy tales of the ancient. They knew this is fair. They, they told him that in the Quran. And they say to him, because they are evil, people don't believe it. Hmm? Who in the world would believe such a garbage? Oh boy, he forgot to say inshallah. And maybe this is why we could not find one Muslim to call us today. And there's no Muslim can answer us because they don't want to say inshallah, I can answer you. If they say inshallah, I can answer you, they can refute me, they can debate me, they can. But always Muslim, they forgot to say inshallah. Until we see you again with more comedy with the stupid Muhammad and his stupid stories. I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget uh, to get notified because YouTube censor our videos as usual. Uh, many of you don't receive notification. You can join us in Patreon. It's for free. And Patreon will send you an email immediately when I post a link for my coming video live stream. Until we see you soon again, the Lord, my friend, is the Messiah. I don't want to compare between the wise Lord and his glorious words and wisdom and the stupidity of such a stupid religion. This is not even a religion. This doesn't even fit for, for a person. He is certified as stupid. Who in the world can be convinced with such an idiot stories? They fool you only when you are chosen to be a fool. No way any human being he convert to Islam or accept Islam as a religion unless he chosen himself to be stupid fool. We prove it to you every day. And there's no way a person he read what Jesus said. He can even compare between the stupidity of Muhammad and his false God and the wise Lord, the Messiah. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. I am He. I am God's Son. Before Abraham I am. The Lord, the Messiah, He is not a person speaking wisdom only. He is a person who say, Go and your sin is forgiven. But talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. Not only He forgives sin, he make the one who cannot walk, walk. He make the one who is dead come from the grave. He made the one who have no eyes have eyes. That is the Messiah. He is the one who no grave can hold him and no death can take him. And no Satan can control him. He is holy. His name is holy. His word is holy. His life is holy. And he is right now in the holy heaven with the Holy Father. That is my Messiah. And that is your stupid Muhammad. How dare you even to follow dead man and to leave the living Lord, the Messiah. He is the living Lord. And let the dead one follow the dead man, Muhammad. And let the one who is living and who want to live forever follow the living Messiah. Dead Follow dead. Fleas go to the garbage. Bees go to the flower. 
and you know where you belong. Thank you. God bless you and see you soon again.